introductions. Um, um, you guys are here to see uh, Tracy Garner, and we're pretty excited about this. She's here to talk about publishing and marketing your book. Uh, Ms. Garner is a best-selling author, speaker, writing coach, and course creator. And uh, Tracy is a member of the Washington Romance Writers uh, chapter, Faith, Hope, and Love, um, an online-only uh, chapter of the RWA, and the Association of Christian Fiction Writers, uh, ACFW Virginia chapter, Sisters in Crime, and the Alliance for Independent Authors. Uh, Tracy's books include Pack Light, Thoughts for the Journey, the Parker Brothers series, and the Jameson family series, the third book of which, Against My Window, will be out soon. So with no further ado, here is Miss Garner. Well, hey, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Leticia, for having me and for the Herndon Fortnightly Library for hosting this event. I am Tracy Lydia Garner. Um, I write fiction, which I love so, 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 so much. It is my passion and it has just brought me so much joy and sanity, um, especially in COVID. Um, just these last 20 years, it's my 20 year anniversary. I know you may have never heard of me ever, 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 but that's okay. Um, I uh, continue to write and publish my books, uh, pursuing self-publishing right now, but I have been published traditionally. Um, I will take questions um, in the chat anytime you're ready. And I'll also, um, you know, you can feel free to interrupt me. I'm very informal. I'm also a goofball, so prepare to laugh. Um, there'll be some funny things that could occur. But I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Um, what I will do is I'll just talk, you know, for maybe 20 minutes or so, um, really giving you a broad overview of everything, really talking about mostly the paths to publishing, if you are looking to publish your book, and also um, talking about seven areas where I try to do my marketing. And marketing is such an important function. It is an unnecessary evil. I do, sorry, you know, that it just has to be done. Um, but it's, it is what it is and you have to get out there and promote these books. There are wonderful people who want to read them and want to know about the process. And I really believe um, from the school of thought that everybody has a book in them. I really believe that, that some people choose to, uh, you know, sit down and I'm already sitting down, by the way. <laughs> um, I am a wheelchair user just in case anybody doesn't know. So I make a lot of self-deprecating humorous remarks and it's all good. So you can feel free to laugh. But um, some people choose to pull up to the computer and really go for it and make it work. And some people don't. You just may want to tell a family story or do your family, um, you know, in, important historical information about your family and publish one book, that's fine too. Whatever your purpose is for that, you know, it's all good. So um, I mentioned tracygarner.com is my website. Um, I have reached bestseller status in a category. So I can, I'll talk about that during the marketing time. I used to teach at Nova for almost 14 years, Northern Virginia Community College, just out here in uh, Virginia. Uh, they have like seven campuses and I'm in Loudoun County. Um, I do still maintain a full-time job um, with a local nonprofit uh, here in um, Northern Virginia. And I also um, coach people through the writing process. So you need a little nudge, you need some encouragement. I help people write and publish their books, mostly publishing. People have really written it and you know they're ready for the editing process and ready to move to the next step but because there are so many options they don't know what to do i consult on disability topics too i mostly for my day job i do a lot of social security applications so um i'm always doing those and uh know how to get people on disability um and i also love zoom so i'm so glad um, I mentioned this, sorry, there's two intro slides. I did not realize that, but um, just briefly, it really says kind of the same thing. The only other thing I would add is that I do have an annual conference that I host um, here in Northern Virginia. It's been live for the last seven years. And then last year we went, um, we went virtual and we had an online conference. So that'll be more early summer around June. 
And uh, if you're interested in that, it's just a one full day, like nine to almost like five o'clock um, of different workshops throughout the whole day. And so there's that. These are all my books, all my babies, which I love. Um, 14 books, they're all there. Um, and I am just keep going on. They're in order from top left, kind of zigzag all the way down to against my window, which is coming out in the spring as Letitia mentioned. So really briefly, um, I'm going to talk about the publishing process, but I wanted to let you know how I got started. And that was just, I was really depressed. Um, there is no, no fancy term for it. I was failing college. It's so funny that I would fail at Nova after I went to George Mason University. The campus was much too big. I didn't know what I was doing. They actually broke the axle of my wheelchair because parts of it were inaccessible. And I was like, I hate it here. And so, you know, then my dad was like, well, we're gonna move to Beverly. And, you know, we moved to Latin County. And um, that's kind of where I really found a voice and it's such a small county. It still needed a lot of advocacy for public transportation and stuff around people with disabilities to really begin to find my voice. And so that's kind of, and I was failing. I was failing math for liberal arts. And it was just like, I don't know what to do. What if I don't finish school? And one day in math class, I just started writing. I was like, I don't know what the teacher's talking about. Uh, there's a problem on the board. I don't know what to do here. So I flipped my paper, or actually folded my paper in half. And on the other side, I started writing um, my story. And I actually uh, won a contest um, for aspiring authors uh, hosted by a large publishing house. And that is how I, I actually won and beat out a bunch of other people. I got a trip to New York. I got a $500 advance, which was a lot of money to a 20 year old um, just for writing something. And I had a luncheon in New York at Beat Smith's restaurant and it was all expenses paid. They also paid for my parents to come. And I had a luncheon where I accepted that award. And in that, uh, when I was in my twenties, that really changed my life and just gave me the validation that I needed and actually started getting better grades because I found something that I love. And I talk about that story uh, more in depth um, on all, almost all my interviews um, and people know that's kind of how I started. So what's the process to getting a book deal versus self-publishing? I mean, let's just really get into it. That's what people wanna know. And this Jeff Bezos quote is, there is no map and charting a path ahead will not be easy. We will need to invent, which means we will need to experiment. And when I really started earlier, I was experimenting. I was writing, I was even writing term papers and also creative writing course that I had taken. Um, and I still wasn't doing really well. I did really well in English all through high school um, and was just really an average student. And until I found my writing, it really just helped me grow in my confidence and make me feel better and really created a sense of purpose that I could be a storyteller and tell stories to people for them to enjoy. And that's really what made the difference. So I wanna tell you about, there are really only two, I think um, you could count unconventional traditional publishing as a way I'm gonna go over what that is because that is how I made my foray into publishing was through an unconventional route, which I think are contests and networking with people, people that you meet at conferences and stuff. And so uh, traditional publishing is where you get a contract and you get an advance and they pay you to send them your work. And then they do all the work and they start um, to give you royalties. But even when you get royalties, you have to earn out your advance. So if they give you $5,000, a lot of people don't really think about this. They give you $5,000 you have to earn $5,000 worth of book sales before you start. At the $6,000 mark is when you start to make your money. And so I think people really don't always understand that that is the process. And so sometimes it's a lot of pressure to have a traditional book contract um, when you don't know these things. And then DIY, AKA is just self-publishing. And I'll talk about those steps to do that. So really, when you're submitting to a publisher, um, there is a book called The Writer's Market, and it's as thick as an old phone book. Um, if anybody remembers those, millennials have never seen them probably before in their life. But it's so thick, and it has a listing of all the publishers 
in the United States in other you know locales in other countries. Canada um, has a large publishing um, offering of different publishing houses. It's actually Harlequin is actually in Canada. The largest publisher of romance is actually located in Canada and they also have a New York office too. Um, so what it is is you want to send them a query letter. Um, and the one thing you need to know when you're researching them is, do they take unagented submissions? I always have trouble saying that. If you do not have an agent, some publishing houses will not look at you at all. And so you'll need to query an agent first who will represent you. And then they will be the kind of broker to go before your liaison, to go before you, go before the publishing house in order to represent you and your books that you want to publish. So there are many houses, however, that are taking um, people that don't have agents. And so you'll just have to know the difference. Um, be careful about never try to make someone who says they don't take people without agents into someone that just, oh, they're gonna love me so much. They'll take my work. That just does not happen. Um, they're pretty big sticklers. And they're also looking to see, can you read instructions? I said, I only take young adult or I only take dystopian um, or I only take nonfiction. Um, half of the reasons why people are rejected is just because they haven't read the guidelines and they haven't adhered to them. And that's a major thing. They're looking to see, I can't even work with you if you can't follow instructions. So that is a big no-no. You'll also um, be submitting to them the first three chapters. I say first three because I'm astonished when sometimes people ask me, well, which three chapters should I send? These are the best, seven, eight, and nine. And, and, you know, and it's like, well, they don't have any foundational knowledge about what you're submitting. So how can they get into a story if they're not sure uh, how it's gonna go? Chapter six, seven, and eight may be great, but you really need to go back and make chapters one, two, and three because that is the real place where the exciting incident and the hook happens in order to draw the reader in. You want them to hold on till six, seven, and eight, not get to six, seven, and eight and think, wow, this is really good. Wish I could figure out what's happening here. I'm not quite sure. So that's really important. And then the synopsis. That is your submission package when you're trying to get a traditional publisher to accept you, to want your work, to offer you a contract and to be really interested in the story. One of the things about the synopsis and the query letter is that you don't ever leave them hanging. You never say in your letter, hey, get my book and you know, find out more because it's a cliffhanger. That's not the time to entice them in that way. You wanna make sure that you give them all of the details. They wanna know how it ends. They wanna know the main characters. How do they fare throughout the entire book? And so those are three key pieces of information that you um, that you will have. Now I have a question um, I'm going to ask. Who thinks that, where should the book be when you're writing these people? You can put it in the chat or you can come off, um, you know, should you be almost done, halfway done? Completed, edited, completely, Completed, edited, reviewed, done. Thank you so much. Yes, that's right. And thank you, uh, Pat. And I'm sorry, Leticia, um, someone asked if the chimes could be turned off at all. Do you know how to turn them off? Um, but yes, that's you're so right, Pat. Thank you for responding to my question. Um, it should be completely done and you should edit. Yes, there are editors at the publishing house, but if they feel like they can't get through the book because there are just so many issues, um, then, you know, you have to, you're not going to get the chance that you need to make a really great impression. Yes, they will fix it. Yes, there may be additional edits that they have, but you need to work with a freelance editor to start in order to get through to them and to see a really, for them to see a really polished work. Next is an unconventional, some unconventional methods one that I use were contests. I was crying that time when I told you I was in college, I got an F and I just started searching online 
And I actually really prayed that I was like, hey, God, um, you want to give me something else in case this soul school thing doesn't work? And I felt like he, you know, put the contest just scrolling. And it was like through tears and I was like, what is that? And then my tears kind of dried up and I was like, this is for me. I really felt like the contest spoke to me because it said, are you an aspiring author? I really wasn't an author. Of course, I did some writing. I submitted to blogs and I actually, uh, before I entered the contest, I wrote another story um, that was like an online serial. And so the people that had the website, they were like, write the next chapter of this book. I ended up writing the entire rest of the book and they only wanted a couple chapters at a time. And I would get mad. I was like, I finished it for you. Why don't you just put up the rest of my content? Um, and they were like, you know, I, they, I didn't say that to them, but I was thinking that. But it was like, the whole point was to get people to write different chapters, not for you, Tracy, to write the entire book and finish it and end our little, whatever we're trying to do here. So that was like, wow, I must be, I, I think I'm pretty good. So I'm gonna enter this contest. And so when you're looking for contests, um, you wanna make sure they're very reputable. The ones hosted by large publishing houses are some of the best ones because those are the real people. They're not scammers. They're not people out to get you there and you don't pay anything. When I entered a contest, I didn't pay anything. I, it was 20 years ago, so I did mail the manuscript. I had to pay for postage. And I would actually print my, my manuscripts at school um, and it, when we had a computer lab back then. And the reason why I'm laughing is because um, people would go to the printer in this lab of like 30 desks and 30 computers. Everybody's working. You go to the printer, which is in the central spot, usually by a proctor or a monitor. And you know, it's like, they're like, everybody's waiting there for their, their print out to come out. And one time I printed like 50 pages of my novel and everybody's standing around like, who's taking up so much of the printer? Who's hogging the printer? Oh my God, this is ridiculous. And I was like, I don't know. Oh my God, this, I'm so annoyed. Why are they doing that? And it's like, and then when they would leave, I would like take my 50 stack, put it under my coat and like, just like, ah who did that but it's me um then everybody would not know because everybody went back to the computer to find you know to print their thing again because they were so frustrated so I didn't have a printer at home at the time and I had to get my writing done at school um in the computer lab so that's just a funny story so other ways you can meet people when I say networking events I'm talking about meeting agents and editors who are coming to the conferences to present and who you know ask questions and give presentations and so they come in and they do that what you need to do is follow up with them send them an email you can send me an email um i have a list of editors that i sometimes give out I mean, it's only three but there are tons that i can point you in the right direction just say hey that workshop you did was so great um i'm interested in knowing more about blah 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 i actually met a freelance editor who would end up working at the New York house 20 years ago and we're still friends. And all because I would talk to her on Facebook, talk to her on chat when AOL had the chat rooms and it was a big thing. Um, and so really following up, there is no, oh, you got lucky, you met some great people. One person told me that in a workshop once and I was like, oh, I think maybe you're never gonna meet people. That's your attitude. But my point is that you just have to follow up. And you have to say hi. And even in the chat, I see a lot of people, um, not here necessarily, but in other chats for conferences, some of the online conferences that I've been to, they say, good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Sometimes the speaker will um, encourage you to put your contact information, just your email address and your name and what you write. And so that is also a good way to um, start to let everybody know. Next is uh, anthologies. There are people looking for others to commit to anthologies. And so you just want to make sure that it's in something that you can write and that you can deliver. I've seen a lot of anthologies fall and fail because not everybody has submitted their stuff on time. So if you have a section in that anthology, it's also a great way to get on a bestseller list because the anthology will make it onto the bestseller list because there's so many people in it. And then you can also take some credit for that because you are in that. 
And that's a great way to also start your career and say that you are a best-selling author because you're a part of this anthology. And I've seen people contribute to like two or three anthologies and never do anything else. You should be working on your next full-length book to kind of follow on the heels of that anthology that did so well because there were so many people involved in it. Speaking, obviously, at library events like this. And then another unknown thing that a lot of people don't know about is called PitMag. PitMag is essentially, and you can Google PitMag. Um, I have more about it in another slide, but it's really where people are writing 280 characters because that's all you can have on Twitter. And there are editors and agents that are looking. It's four times a year, and I have the dates in another slide, um, four times a year that there's this big, huge PitMag. So you'll put a synopsis of your book and what it is, and there are examples online also. And then an editor will say, oh, you know, I want to see that, you know, contact me. So I have loved writing also just because it's a way for the words to speak for itself. As a person with a disability, winning the contest was such a major deal to me because I had the opportunity for someone to judge me just on my words and whether or not I could tell a story. They didn't have to see me or see my wheelchair or anything. And they didn't have the opportunity to judge me. So I always mention that because if people have, if you have a stuttering issue, if you don't speak as well as you could, you know that your writing can really speak for you when you're trying to get yourself out there and get a book deal. Because it's a big deal. You get to be judged on your writing alone. And when you take away everything, like I could have been a great writer, but people might have limited me because of the stigma that having any kind of uh, disability can present. So that's another reason why I'm just so enamored with the ability to be not judged that way, which still does happen. And the second um, route is just when you do everything yourself, you, you, know, you outsource for, and when I say do everything yourself, take that with a grain of salt because I don't do my own book covers, I, I hire out. I don't do my own editing, I hire out for somebody for that. I didn't used to do my own formatting for the books, to get the interior just right. But I learned how to do it because it was one more thing I wanted to take off the list of things that I'm paying for. So if I'm gonna promote the book, I want the money mostly to be dedicated to promoting the book. So now the only two things that outsource are the editing in the book cover design and have really taught myself how to do everything else. So I wanna just mention, um, do you still need an agent? A question from Ashley, do you still need an agent if your piece is small? It depends on where you're trying to get to. Remember, if you, you know, people don't put out many tiny books. Um, so it depends on what you're trying to get your book into or your story into, if you can give me an example, I'll talk about that more. Um, a personal essay, well, are you trying to get into the New York Times? Um, they have essays in the New Yorker or, you know, something like that. Then um, I'm not really sure, but I, I think that you would still have to submit through their channels. And the other thing is that every single publishing house, every single publishing outfit from newspapers have a channel and a path for you to go. And so it's important for you to see what that is and then read that. They may tell you right there. Um, but no, in, in a magazine, you would pitch um, a like a sample and you would query them. I have an article about this, and I think it would be a perfect fit for your for the New Yorker magazine. It talks about this, this, and this. And in the past, I saw you co covered this, this, and this. So in the Writer's Digest, they also list magazines. And so you, ne you definitely wouldn't need an agent um, now to understand where you're trying to submit to for magazines. You need to pitch to them through a query letter, and that's it. But you also need to be able to show any previous published work that you have. So you want to try to start building a little bit of a portfolio of past published pieces that you might put on a website so that you can say, I've written for this, I've written for O Magazine, um, you know, Better Homes and Garden and, um, you know, Architectural Digest or something like that. So you'll be showing that I'm a professional 
and I have, you know, these credentials, and that that will make it look more appealing. Now, in, in the absence of having pieces in a portfolio, it really is just to write for free. Write for free and see where you can get published and start to build your credentials that way, and then start to look for lucrative opportunities to be published, have your articles published and paid for them. So that's one way. Okay, so Ashley also asked, uh, you mentioned having a synopsis sent in with your merit view script. Also, you said letters. What is the role of a letter? The query letter is one page um, and you have to email it. There are no more traditional paper query letters. Everything is an e-copy now in the body of an email. And what you should do is write it in Word first because then you'll know if you've reached a page. Every now and then people try to play with the margins but an, ed an experienced editor at a publishing house, an experienced agent can, already, can really see how it's supposed to look. And they can know when you've gone like three paragraphs over and this is really a two page letter or a three page letter. So um, the Writer's Digest breaks down what a query letter is. And it's really just, you know, dear editor, you should use their name. You can call the publishing house and just say, is, you know, is Sally editor still working there? And they'll be like, oh, Sally editor died. And you'll be like, oh no, don't query her. Um, so you wanna make sure you get the name and get the spelling right before you submit. And you have to go to a direct person or just end, your query level will end up anywhere. And in the first paragraph, you try to give a hook about I'm writing a 1912 um, historical uh, romance about this character she encounters this, uh, the hero is this, and he encounters this, and then you go on. That's the first paragraph. You want to let them know this is what the book is about because that's not interesting to you. The second paragraph is about, you know, who you are. You have experience. I've been writing forever. I've won a couple local contests. I attended Tracy Garner's conference, and it was awesome. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, you just say kind of what you've been doing, what you've been doing these last few years to make you, you know, be in the writing sphere? Did you win a contest? Did you final? Did you get an honorable mention? Are they going to publish your work? Is your first book out? Book out. And so that's like the second and third paragraph. And then just the closing is, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. There are examples. I mean, a whole letter, probably three of them. I just saw them the other day in the Writer's Digest. And it tells you why this is a good query. And it also gives you examples of a bad query. So you can use those. So let's keep going. Um, so as I mentioned, um, this is what it is. I just went over everything. One page emailed in the body of an email. Absolutely never send attachments. They don't know who you are. They can't trust you. What if you download something that you stranger has attached and it blows up your computer? or you get the black screen of death, or there's a virus. Um, the first three chapters, the beginning, please, attachments after you ask for it. Usually you'll query first and you'll wait to hear something unless you've met them unconventionally through a conference. They may say, oh, send me something, send me the full package, which is the query letter, three chapters and a synopsis, and let me know. But they've had some contact with you in order to let them know that they can trust you. And this is something they have asked for and you're following up. And you always wanna mention, by the way, I wrote to an agent once and I said, you know, your quirky personality really resonated with me because I feel like I'm quirky too. Find some in and something to, um, you know, to connect with them on. I met another editor whose son had Down syndrome and I told her I did all the social security applications for people and she was like, I really wanna to talk to you about that, but send me something, I'd love to see it. And I just like, we found a connection through disability and through her son who has Down syndrome. And so think about ways that you can find a connection with somebody. Okay. So what is the process uh, to self-publishing? You really are the captain. That's the good news. You're charting your own destiny. And I just want to mention that all my slides have some kind of beautiful road um, and with different skies and stuff, but a picture of a road because this is a journey. Uh, which is what I was going for. You, the bad news is you are the captain. You don't really know where you're going. You don't know how to run that ship quite the way you want. You're just kind of navigating through everything and you are responsible for everything. So this 
on this slide, I'm going to read everything really quickly, but it is in order of what you would do when you are self-publishing. You want to start looking for, you know, three to six people. Your Facebook is your friend for this because you can say, I see people posting all the time on Facebook. I have a book about, you know, historical, you know, uh, post-World uh, War II era uh, captain injured in this. Um, I'm looking for some beta readers. Are you interested? People will direct message you and they're like, yes, I'd love to read. I would read this. And they have to be people not related to you. Yes, your mom is an avid reader. She might have been an English teacher. She can read too, but mom is not unbiased. Dad is not unbiased. Cousins uh, and other extended family members are not unbiased. And they're not necessarily voracious readers. You want your beta readers to be people who read all kinds of things and have a really extensive reading repertoire of library that they're reading new people all the time. So they can really give you some good feedback. I would also create a questionnaire so you can have a much more fruitful conversation about what they read and they may not remember. A bad beta reader is like, yeah, it was so good. Like, what, really, all of it? Did you read it all? Um, you know, a really good beta reader will have some comments. Even if it is a spectacular read, they'll still have things to share. Um, then you want to get, you know, editing. You obviously want to edit as much as you can, but the beta readers may have things that you need to totally change about the plot. And so you don't want to have wasted the money editing that. And beta readers should know this isn't edited. So they will comment on things that are not related to grammar and punctuation. That's really important. Um, and as a beta reader, if they've done any in the past, they'll know that. They'll know that I'm focusing on story plot holes, did you call your character 13? And in the next few chapters, he's 27. You know, what is happening here? Building a team to outsource. You can start looking for your book cover person now. You can, what I do when I first started out, now I kind of know what I want and I have um, a couple of different cover designers that I use. Um, but I used to just, just screenshot or screen grab, which is really, um, yeah, screen capture. Um, just different book covers that I liked and sent them to the book cover designer so they could know I really like these different covers that I've seen on Amazon. And so go look and start to see what you, and a really good book cover designer will have a questionnaire. They don't have a questionnaire. They don't know. They're probably not the best. And they're good at graphic design. They know about what colors complement each other. They know about the color wheel and how certain colors work together. They know about the period of the piece you're writing so they can make the best cover for you. So make sure you vet people and make sure they have the right tools. Uh, a formatter, you'll be formatting the book once it's back from and edited. Um, and then you'll be getting your ISBNs, filing your copyright, choosing a printer or a platform. So you're gonna choose someone who can print on demand to get all your books to you Get a proof, always get a proof. Amazon has a proof. You pay like $7 and you get your book. It'll have a watermark on the cover that says, this is not for sale. This book is not for sale. And you get that, you look through it and you make sure, and then you make it live. And that I know that I have simplified the process so much. It's a lot more moving parts than that. But um, it's important to know that this is a doable thing. I'm doing it every time. I write a new book. This is the process that I'm going through. Of course, there are a couple more details, but in a nutshell, this is it. And you can start everything all the way through. You don't have to wait for each little segment to be done in order to move forward. I go ahead and get a copyright, um, you know, as soon as the book is done and it's edited, and that's the version I want to go with. But I don't wait for the copyright certificate to come back because it takes six months to a year. Copyright office is significantly backlogged. As soon as you have an email that says, thank you for submitting your copyright, you will receive blah, blah, blah in the mail soon, you know, or whatever they say with me. But you have that email, move forward and keep going. I release my books without the certificate. Let's see. So how do you find a reputable editor? Um, there's tons of editors. There's actually... Um, a place called the Association of Authors and Authors Representatives, AAR. And that is a place that lists 
bad editors that you want to be aware of. They have like a blacklist kind of, um, and they also have a list of editors that you um, that you can just freelance. And they're all hanging out on Facebook. There are Facebook groups for them. And then by asking people, ask other people, who's your editor? And one thing people don't do when they read books, many of us skip the acknowledgements and we skip the dedication page. In those pages, if you like that book and you think that it was edited spectacularly well, the author has usually thanked their editor in that section of the book. But we just skipped to chapter one because we're ready to get reading or the prologue. And so, yeah, there is a lot of boring stuff in the dedication. There are also sometimes nuggets of little gold in there. Um, and also in the front of the book is who designed the cover. Cover designed by in the company name or the individual artist name. So you can go and then begin to research them and look for them and see if you can find them. And if you really like the work that they've done, say, hey, I really loved the book cover you did for so-and-so. Are you doing freelance covers for others, for people that are self-publishing? Nine times out of 10, they are. If not, ask them. People, people um, don't follow up. You know, you're not the person that can do it, but could you recommend somebody? So that's always a follow-up question I tell people to ask, no matter what, in everything. I, I don't care what you're doing. If somebody can't bake you a cake, do you know any other bakers that can help you? Um, you know, so just never be afraid to keep asking. And one of the things I'll say, the, the editor process, I always tell people, it's very simple. You will contact them, tell them what the work is, tell them how long it is, what genre it is, and um, say, you know, do you have time in your calendar? Would you be willing to look at a sample? They should always do a sample. Nobody should take an entire manuscript not knowing you and not knowing how you write. They should take one to three chapters and they'll return it to you. And you can decide, did I like what they had to say about the work? Did I like the changes they suggested? Were they encouraging but firm in their comments that they returned to me? Um, when I was emailing them, were they steadily contacting me and trying to woo me into their list of clients? You know, all of these things will be an indicator of how your relationship is going to be working throughout the entire process. I've had editors that one editor that I fell out with because really lacked communication style. You know, everything was red writing and scraped through and that doesn't sound good and this is unrealistic. And so you have to be really careful. Now, part of it was that that was in my 20s and I didn't always believe that the editor had my best interests at heart. And they did, like I said, a communication barrier that they didn't know how to be kind. They were a little bit abrasive with their comments. And so, you know, you're putting your heart out on your sleeve, you're sharing your innermost writings and someone rips you. And it's like, wow, could you have said that a little bit nicer? That I don't want to go and jump off a cliff right now. Um, so, you know, you have to really think about how are you relating just getting through the sample phase? Okay, I like the editor that I have now, um, and I've had probably three total editors. The last editor I have right now is from the UK. She has a lovely accent. Um, she was an English major. She's a military wife, and I haven't seen her in about eight years. We met at the community college. We were both taking a nonprofit um, certificate course, and we just started talking. She gave me her card, and I was like, okay, she's edited, you know, eight books now for me. And we haven't seen each other. She moved all the way to Germany and now she's back in the States in just the last year. And we still, we FaceTimed. Um, but I just really want to send the book to somebody, edit it, give me a little editorial letter with the top, with the points that you think I need to work on. And we'll just keep working. Uh, because I'm working full time, I really want to just get the information and go and fix it and keep it moving. So other ways of conventional publishing are just get involved. There are so many online conferences that you do not have to wear pants for. It is wonderful. <laughs> but you can, you know, get dressed from the waist up, go to these conferences, have your tea, your coffee, and just listen and then ask questions. Come on camera, because that's also a way for them to get to know you. Come on camera and let them see you and get to know you 
and start networking. I went to probably about nine or 10 conferences last year. I kind of theme my years. Um, so last year was a learning year, had a little bit of extra income because I wasn't going out every day, didn't have the gas, didn't have, you know, whatever, the dry cleaning, didn't have the lunch at Subway every day or Chick-fil-A. And so really use that money to just say, look, I would never go to these conferences otherwise because one, I don't travel that much because they always break my wheelchair. And um, so I really travel mostly up and down the East, wherever I can get to by mega bus or by train. So I go to Florida has a big conference every year and I go to New York. So that's kind of my, my route. So I went to conferences that were hosted by, you know, California, um, Nevada, you know, Las Vegas and all these different places, because I was like, they're going to make it virtual, which means I'm going to be able to participate this time. And so I probably went to nine to 10 different conferences just, you know, trying to see, and even seeing what I really go to this, if it were live. So that's another thing to just see. Okay. Um, so these are some of the problems, some of the problems with the three routes. Um, what's the process? Okay. First problem with traditional publishing is you are waiting for someone. There's a picture of a pothole, by the way. I've been showing roads. This road has a huge pothole filling up with muddy water. Um, so you're waiting. Um, and that's really the only real deterrence is waiting for people to get back to you. You send your stuff to an agent or you send your query letter to an editor. The waiting will kill you. And I don't know if it's just me as I get older. I have a sense of urgency. I want to make things happen. I don't want to wait for you to say, yes, you're great and we love your work. I just want to chart my own course and do my own thing and publish these books and get them out there. So it's waiting because it can take six months to a year for you to get a response on one query. And sometimes you get no response or you get a form letter that says, thank you so much for submitting title that some intern put in, title of your book. Uh, it's not quite what we're looking for at this time, but we encourage you to submit elsewhere or something like that. They don't say that mean, but that's kind of what it feels like. And then the validation. As the publishing houses dwindle or they become, um, I have a slide about, um, these are the top five. Everybody wanted to be at a top five publishing house. I highlighted Random House Penguin because um, Random House bought Penguin first. Now Random House is trying to buy Shiman and Schuster. And so there's a lawsuit to stop this. And when you get into publishing, you'll know about all this stuff, but then you're gonna turn it into the top four. And of course I put Amazon because they do have a publishing house. Um, I think they have four imprints. So they do take submissions also. You just kind of have to know which way to go. But um, so the top five is where everybody wanted to be. But as the gatekeepers narrow, and if Random House becomes Random House Penguin Simon Schuster, you know, they're, they're going to further limit what they pick up. They're going to further limit. They're probably going to limit more staff. You know, people get fired when there's, a, a, you know, a kind of, uh, I forget what it's called, but when people, a merger, people get fired when there are mergers. That means less people to read the work, less people to say yes to your books, less people for everything, for editing, for cover design, for marketing. Um, and so, you know, that's the downside of a traditional publishing house. I'll also say that most people never know if you get a book deal tomorrow, your book is not coming out till 2022, 23. Okay. Because they already have all the authors that they're working with and kind of working through a systemic or a systematic way of, um, you know, you'll get your book cover. It'll be typeset and formatted. You'll need to have two to three weeks to look at that and to check everything. You're going to get the covers. Do you like this? He's wearing a red shirt. Do you like this? He's wearing a blue shirt. That'll take three months. Um, you know, there really won't be any marketing for you at a large publishing house. A large publishing house is still wonderful, but there's so many things that you can do on your own that's making them more and more obsolete. So I better keep going. I'm going to be really running out. Okay. Tracy? Yes. There was someone who wanted clarification on the length of the summary um, for the query letter, like how how long the, the um, plot synopsis should be. Yes, it'll be about a paragraph. So your whole letter, your query letter will be about four paragraphs total. 
that first paragraph will be what it is, uh, what it's about. And you also think in terms of your back cover copy. It's called the BCC or the back cover blurb, or it's also called the synopsis, but I don't use it because then you get confused with the three to five page synopsis that you'll also be sending to the agent or the editor. So, um, so the back cover blurb is what you're going for. And in that way, it's okay to entice. It's okay to leave a little bit of cliffhanger because you want them to say, oh, I want to know more. Give me the full manuscript, please submit, okay? So the unconventional routes, some of the problems are just finding the right conference to attend. Um, I've been to conferences that are more literary and they frown upon romance and creative fiction and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously there's conferences that are just about nonfiction books. Um, researching online, sometimes you'll research, you'll go to a publishing house's website. It'll be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. They'll be missing information that you need. Um, ensuring your work is protected as you share. You know, I don't make your book into, you know, I hate to use this word, but a tramp. Don't push your book everywhere, all around people. Okay, really keep it to the people that you've vetted, people that you believe are reputable, and people that you know will protect your work. So, you know, you're not sending full manuscripts to hundreds of different book publishing houses at one time. You're kind of sending it to one or two or three, and then waiting to hear back. There's little help in understanding some of the processes. I wouldn't say there's little help. I know I wrote this. There's so much information, it's hard to know which way to go. There is a sheer amount of, of information on publishing that is crazy. And so, and a lot of it contradicts. One person says, do this. Another person says, don't do that, do this. Um, and they don't happen often. Sometimes the contests don't happen as often. Uh, you have to be in the right place at the right time with the right manuscript. Um, and that's what I mean by that is following different trends. How do you know which trend, um, you know, when the vampires came out with the Twilight series, then that kind of fizzled out, but it's going to come back again. You just have to know when, you know, you just kind of have to still submit. Don't follow trends. Submit what you want and there'll be an audience for it. And then also waiting. You're still waiting even though a, through a conventional, unconventional route, you'll still be waiting. All right, and then I discussed PitMad. Um, these are the dates for PitMad this year. It's one full day of sending your little 280 character out there into the Twitterverse. Um, and then you also use different tags. I really encourage you to research it. Don't do this blind because you'll need to use tags like tag, hashtag YA, hashtag own voices, which means that it's in your own voice and it's also a marginalized voice because the agents and editors are also buying those too. Uh, hashtag nonfiction, hashtag fiction, hashtag romance. So really you'll have to learn the tags and um, the website is here. You can get this PowerPoint by emailing. My email address is at the end. So pitchwars.org slash pitmad. I put the successes here because I didn't want you to miss out on seeing um, some people that have gotten book deals, lucrative book deals just through pitmad. And it's also going to be a process. It's not going to be overnight. They're not going to be like, yes, send it and you're published, you know, uh, within 45 days. That's not how it's going to work. You're still going to submit your book and they're going to read it. They're going to take time and they're gonna get back to you at their leisure, okay? And then I took a little, because I take so many quick little challenges because I love them because they really do give you a lot of information without paying for the whole thing. I don't know when Kathy Burt um, her five-day challenge, get a book deal 101, was just a fun little five-day challenge. I didn't pay for anything. Um, I'm all about the challenges because they give you so much information and if you really pay for everything, you can pay to work with her, you'll go broke. Um, so take five day challenges and really try to submerge yourself in the material that people are going over. Okay, here's just a couple of resources. This magazine, Poets and Writers, comes out every once uh, this, I don't mean this magazine, it comes out six times a year, but once a year, they have the writing contest where they list hundreds of contests. And so that's one way. Now, these contests, because it's poets and writers, it's more literary, so you won't find all the fiction, but they still have fiction contests in here. 
but there's tons. Just search Writer's Contest, Writer's Digest um, is a reputable magazine. The Writer Mag, I think it's writermag.com is another reputable magazine. There's really some that are real bigger and more popular than others. So that's something to think about. I mentioned Fiverr because it's a place to outsource, uh, getting book cover design, getting formatting, even getting some mock-ups, mock-ups of your book. All right, I'm gonna talk about marketing. Um, someone says, I don't think you went over the synopsis on the last slide. Can you please, how long should it be? The um, publishing house is gonna tell you what they want. So really reading those submission guidelines, they're gonna let you know this is how long we want it to be. Um, and it's hard. I, every single author I know hates the synopsis. And even I think some reason why people go indie is because you don't have to do it um, when you go when you indie publish. But it is hard. You basically, for a synopsis, you essentially have to whittle down each chapter into about a sentence. If you think about 30 chapters, 30, maybe 60 good sentences, no more than three pages. That is so hard. I'd rather have a root canal, honestly. Like, I just don't want to do it. Um, <laughs> I hate it. I, I, have, I don't think I've actually ever done one all the way through. I have pieces of one. Jane Friedman will be a major um, person. She's an author of like 40 books, um, both nonfiction and fiction. Um, she's in the Charlottesville, Virginia area. I listen to her. She has these things. She's not a preacher, but she has a thing called Sunday Sermons on Sundays where she does a little hour chat. Anybody can join on Facebook, but she has a really long and lengthy article on writing the synopsis. And even people title it the dreaded synopsis because everybody hates writing it. So no more than three to five pages. And some publishing houses are going to be like two pages for the synopsis, please. It just stinks. Okay, so I'm going to talk about marketing. We're running, and I totally said we can go past three if, if you want to stay, if you have time. And this will also be recorded and sent and uh, put on the library YouTube channel, I believe. Leticia can correct me. Um, slow and steady wins the race, but it doesn't always feel like it. There's a turtle on my slide. I'm a turtle person. I have a turtle necklace. I have a turtle figurine. Um, because I've always uh, felt a little slow, but I've always been steady and consistent and keep trying, keep trying different things. And so that's how I've kind of lived my life as the turtle and tortoise in the air. Everybody knows that story. So I'm going to talk about briefly five areas. I do a whole class on marketing, which is, can be like four hours. So I just want you to know you're not going to get all you need in 10 minutes, but there are some good nuggets here. So one of the little things about marketing is people forget the grassroots, more organic efforts to marketing. And I'll talk about that. The other thing is word of mouth and you have to build your mailing list. Even if you are not published, even if you have not built um, a website, you can start a blog for free and you can have people sign up. You can talk about the writing journey. People are always like, well, what do I talk about? I don't have a book out yet. People wanna know, how's it going? What did you do today? Do a conference review. On my Instagram, I did five planners. Um, one was a book launch planner by someone. Another one was a social media planner. Every year I pick five planners and I review them. And people really like that. There's more engagement when I do that at the beginning of every year. Um, number three is social media. You have to really focus your efforts and choose the platforms that are best. Live events, I love. I'm kind of a Martha Stewart wannabe. I always love planning events. I planned a book launch party for my book in 2015. I had 100 people attend. Um, it was at the Crown Plaza in Herndon. It was awesome. And then advertising. Sadly, Amazon and all of these different places, Facebook, it's, you know, they can't just make things free anymore. You have to pay to play. That's unfortunate, but that's what they do. So, People always ask too, how do I get in bookstores? There are two ways to get in bookstores. However, you are not going to be in every single bookstore because you have to call them. You have to network. They have to see that your book is getting traction and then maybe they'll order from the catalog. You have to be in Baker and Taylor and in Ingram, which is the print on demand. You have to be available in the catalog. So when a bookstore goes to search, 
say you were to call your local big, your local barn, uh, barn and nobles, no more, but who's left? Um, there's a bookstore in the malls, I think it's Borders. Um, but let's say you were to call the bookstore and say, you know, I want to really have a signing. If you are not in Baker and Taylor going to be like, uh, I don't know, your book's not really available where we can get it. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Um, and you'll be like, darn it. And so, you know, you just want to make sure that you are available through there so that they can look at you, they can see how you're doing, and they can order one book, two books. Ask them to take two books. Say, could you just order two books and see how it does? And if, you know, people buy, order two more, and then go by the store by yourself and just buy two of them. Don't tell them who you are. Um, but you'll be moving the books, getting traction, and trying to build it. I'm joking. Don't do that. Um, because when you come back as an author and have a book sign, they'll be like, ah, not that they're going to remember. You'd be surprised, though. Um, and then on consignment, I have been to bookstores where my book is not on the shelf. It's not through Baker and Taylor. I bring my own books, and we split 60-40, and there is nothing wrong with that. I've had um, I did a multi-author signing with six authors. They gave us cash right there. When the book signing was over, we packed up and they had tracked how many books I sold through them. They gave the cash, the 60% uh, percent that they owed me. So when I'm talking about grassroots, I'm talking about a press release. Local author does good. Local author writes about old distillery. You know, what is the tie-in that you can tie into this? Local clubs and groups. Um, I've been to a restaurants where somebody ran the book club. I came and talked, got free dinner and talked about writing the publishing because the whole book club was interested. And they all bought books, obviously, because they read none. Um, mailings have become really obsolete, but people actually like getting something in the mail uh, every couple of years, not every year because it is expensive. I do a newsletter mailing, a hard copy newsletter and send it out to my mailing list find an angle or a local tie-in, which I mentioned, people don't do press releases anymore. You do them electronically now, and you can find all the newspapers you want on Wikipedia. That's where I go, and LinkedIn. And you can also pitch to, um, I pitched to Great Day DC, which is a local news show here. And they said, you know, we just have that topic about writing a book, come back to us in about six months. So I'll be doing that. Um, you can find the producers on LinkedIn, people who run the shows, the producer, the editor, um, or whoever at the local television station. Um, and then exposure and book signings, which I mentioned. You don't have to have a book signing in a bookstore. You can set up a table anywhere um, and, be, and sell your books. Word of mouth is next. Uh, building your mailing list, readers groups. If you go to my website right now, I have a pop-up. You can have it on your blog, a pop-up that says, get alerted about news. My next book is coming out. Sign up here. So you want to do that. You want to um, have that way to capture people who are visiting your website. You want to tell everybody. I joke, even tell the people who don't like you because they'll be so impressed. They'll be like, oh, more reasons not to like you, but good for you. I'll probably read your book in secret and never tell you because I'm intrigued. Um, build your email list with a freebie or opt-in. You don't have to have another like little book or novella, which is a lot, which is what a lot of authors have. They have a free novella or a free chapter. I usually do checklists, checklists about this or that, checklists for publishing a book. Um, but just be careful that your, your opt-in or your freebie matches because I spent a little bit of wasted time having a checklist about publishing. When people are readers, they're coming to my website to find the books and to read them. But it worked because some people wanted the checklist too. People love anything free. Someone has raised their hand. I just wanna see who it is. Um, I missed it. But you can put it in the chat too. You can also come off camera and let me know, okay? Um, as soon as I, I only have two more things for the five ladies, and I'm going to show you how I also got to number one on Amazon really quickly, and then I'll take all the questions. Um, so I focused on three platforms. It is exhausting to focus on too many. So pick some, pick two. 
and just focus on learning those because you have to learn how to place the ads. You have to learn what the engagement is and you just have to kind of understand all those little tidbits. And so three really is enough. I'm not even really on Twitter that much, but I post, whatever I post on Instagram goes to Twitter through an automated type of thing, like a Buffer app or Hootsuite. Um, I'm using something called Later. So I'm not doing double duty. I don't have the time to post on all of these three platforms. I use a social media scheduler, post it once, and it goes to these three platforms all at one time. And then live events. I love events. If you really don't like events, have somebody plan one for you. Ask a gregarious friend to do it for you. Um, they like doing that. Um, even just a little something at a restaurant where you want, you can invite the press, send out a press release. Local author hosts book signing event to launch her new career. Um, local author leaves corporate after 20 years and charts her own, own course in publishing. These are headlines I'm giving you. So use those, write them in bold, and then, you know, talk about um, press releases are a dime a dozen online, but you can send them to your local uh, news outlets. Book fairs and festivals, I go to those. There's a big one in Virginia every year, um, Festival of the Book. I've been on a panel um, and I've been to a bookstore on a panel and then sign book af afterwards. Ask someone to host and then plan your own event. The event that I planned at the Crown Plaza in 2015 um, was just spectacular. What I did was I took the first chapter of my book and I um, took out all the description and I just had dialogue. And I hired some actors to come in and do the reading. And, um, and so that was just, people were amazed. Turned down the lights. I had some intro music off of my computer and on some speakers. My cousin helped me, um, you know, and so, and I found an actress on Facebook who really wants to be an actor. I asked her, hey, could you do this for $50? Come and read this part as my main character. And it was just, people were mesmerized. And I will never forget that. I think I've been afraid to do another event because like, I have like Michael Jackson syndrome, which people laugh about. It's like, what? I felt like he was always trying to top himself. Tracy's trying to top herself. How can she be even more spectacular with another live event? So I haven't had one. Um, so advertising is the way to go. Um, and you can get to your number one. You have to be very niched. So there were three categories that are, and you can see them now if you go to look up this book, A Current Affair. And um, it's African-American, it's uh, Kindle reads. There are all kinds of keywords and tags. And I took a class last year with the added time, not going anywhere. Um, I'm not doing book events, live book events. I was able to really study on Instagram how to really properly prepare an ad. And so I really learned what to do because I was just throwing money at something and not really looking at the keywords, the tags, making sure that, you know, I had the proper look of the ad and what it looks like. And so that is how you really can do that. But you need to take a class because it's so volatile. There's no way you're going to just figure out how it goes. You have to take something to learn. And then your greatest marketing tool is writing more books. For those of you who are really struggling with just book one, I guarantee you, write book one, get it out there, success or fail doesn't matter. You will start to see a floodgates of more ideas come about. I never ever thought that I would write 14 books, ever. And it's sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's easier, but I always go back to all my old books and be like, how did I do this? And sometimes when I read my books, I'm like, who wrote this? Oh my God, like, oh, this is pretty good, you know? Like, so I just think that it will encourage you to see all your work and all that you have done. Um, I won't read all of this, take all the free classes that you possibly can. This is for marketing. Just try it. You don't know how it's gonna go until you try it. I took a free IG class. Also, Mark Dawson has an ads for authors class. I, I take it over and over again. Every time it's offered, you get something new and sometimes you're not fully paying attention. You miss things. Sometimes I record on my phone what they're saying. And so I just think about it. 
um, I just play it back so I can listen to it just for me, not promoting it, not selling it, not doing anything with it because that would be illegal, but just listening, being able to listen to it over again. Uh, YouTube has so many, so much information. Try one new thing a day. I try to make one new contact a day. IG is Instagram. Sorry, Casey. IG, FB, Twi Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, tons of free books on Amazon about writing and publishing for your Kindle. Kindle has tons of free books that you can get. They always go on sale. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you can get them, which you're paying a monthly fee for, like Netflix. Follow other authors. See what they're doing. Where are they going? And some authors will let you swap newsletters with them. What that means is you'll, you'll get a blurb and a book cover from them, put it in your newsletter, and you will send them your blurb and your book cover, and they will promote it to their audience. So it's really cross-promotion. And never stop learning. Just a couple things I wanted to let you know that are coming up, and then I'm going to take all the questions and we're going to discuss, and I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I'm doing an author life audit. I've already taught this class once, but with the Yosemite, Rem uh, Yosemite Romance Writers, I'll be teaching that again in March. It's really a lecture style course, so if you don't like reading a ton where you don't have much interaction, not, not everybody learns good that way, but it is one way. There's a workbook, there'll be handouts. It's really just going through everything, 14 different topics from income to social media. Are you doing everything that you need to do? under these 14 umbrellas, uh, social media, even life planning, your will, um, your website, do you have a pop-up? Do you have, you know, are you able to update it? And then I'll be doing a radio interview. It's really blog talk radio, which is online radio. It's called the Beauty and Us Radio. And it's a, um, just a little short segment, 6.30 to seven, I think. And then my new book will be coming out soon. This is the third book. I know it says book four, if you look closely, but it is the third book in the Jameson Family Series, which I'm working on right now. Um, email me to get a copy of this PowerPoint. Some good tidbits in here. And then that's it. Thank you so much for being here, all of you. I'm gonna stop share. I'm gonna take some questions. So if you put a question in the chat, let me know. Someone, Lauren, participated in the last pit mat. It was so fun. Everyone's pitches were all so unique. So go and look at those pitches that people made. Go listen to um, people that have gotten big book deals. That's why I put the successes one on there. Um, and then do I have a favorite romance conference? RWA is the gold standard for romance writers. I mean, it really isn't anything else. Yes, um, there's you know, been some issues, but still a good organization. I'm actually president of my local chapter, Washington Romance Writers. My term ends in July. I've been president for a year. I was president-elect for a year, and then now I'm president. And so I'll come off and probably just be a regular board member. Um, but there are lots of other conferences besides RWA. Um, and they did their conference virtual last year, which was great. And because of so much social unrest, social justice, they let um, a lot of African-American authors come for free. So you got a scholarship, which they are to be commended about. Let's see. Um, questions? Unmute yourself. Come on and talk to me. Oh, I'm sorry. The windows are blocking the pit mat address. I'll put them in the chat. Let me just. Tracy. Yeah, go ahead. Tracy. Yeah, just ready. Ashley. Are you ready? Oh, okay. It's me. Ash. I'm Ashley, by the way. Nice thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, this was this is great. And I really look forward to hearing the recording. Okay. Um, I have um, definitely a couple follow up questions. Um, um, where? Um, where would we get the um, writers? I think you called it writers digest. Yes. Um, writers it's on Amazon. Okay. Um, hopefully they have it in electronic format because I don't read regular print. I read like, because of my disability, I read like, like auditorily or large print. Um, yeah, okay. so I think I'm not sure, but I can certainly look into it. 
Yeah. Okay. There may be a text. Um, I'm sure that they could get a text version. Do you use a screen reader? Yes. Okay, that might work. Yeah, you're right. Hopefully. <laughs> um, also, um, 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 if 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 you're hoping to get uh, like say a shorter piece written, um, rather than like say publishing your own book, I notice your presentation focused more on the uh, books. Right, so you can write for any number of magazines. Yeah. Um, through a query letter, that's all it takes. Also, in the Writer's Digest. Oh, good. There are. Um, I'm gonna see if I can um, screen share. I can just probably. Share. That might help to screen share, like like where we buy it and stuff. Yeah, I I was just gonna ask you before my technology had a hiccup. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. So if you write like a shorter piece, like a personal essay um like it is it is it pretty competitive or, or are you saying there's a shorter process like you just said there's like only a letter of inquiry and then when they i guess accept you after the letter then you can submit is that sort of just of how it goes yes definitely you can submit awesome. um if you're accepted um, I think it is a bit shorter process because they're just shorter pieces. They take less time to get through. Yeah. Um, they're just reading. They either like what the magazine pitch, uh, the article that you're pitching is, or they don't. And so they can just, um, the hard thing is just getting those credentials that you need. Um, it's kind of a catch-22. Exactly. Um, um, right. You can't get a job to get some work experience. Nobody will hire you. Because they want experience, but then you have to have experience. You have to write to get the experience. Yeah, no turn. Okay, my last two quick questions are, um, um, well, you indicated you have classes as well of, of your own to take, as well as you said, take other classes for like, I guess it was marketing and editing and things of that nature. Where are some sources to, um, to do that, whether they're paid or not, as well as where where would you find the conferences you spoke of? And my last question is, um, how do we get in touch with you? I mean, you mentioned a website. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll put my website in the chat. Um, where to find conferences? You can just um, there's a ton everywhere, but you also you know I didn't talk about memberships which is also really important. All of those membership organizations that Leticia mentioned, Sisters in Crime is for crime writers and thriller writers, um, Association of Christian Fiction Writers, Christian Writing, but fiction and nonfiction, RWA, Romance Writers, all of the organizations and memberships. And just FYI, I'm no longer a member of all of them. I try to join them. I go a year on, a year off, just to see what they're offering just to see if I like it. And I'm really narrowed down right now to three. So I'm in RWA, I'll always be in there. I have to be in WRW, the chapter, because I'm the president, I have to be in there. Um, and I forget what else. I think I'm in the Association of Writers and Writers Programs. All of the organizations have their own conference often. Oh, wow. And so That's when you go to them, um, if you're a member, you get a discount usually, but you don't have to. And sometimes you can buy the conference ticket and then get your membership wrapped up into that through a little discount. Okay. So that's kind of where um, you would find them. And oh. What was your other question? Thank you. Does anyone else have questions? Just go ahead and start talking. Um, oh, hello. Go ahead, Valerie. Oh, <laughs> hi, thank you for doing the presentation. Um, I was curious about some of the programs that you use when you mentioned um, like for your book design that you started pretty much doing it yourself or you started off kind of freelancing those and hiring and then you started to move towards, um, you took on all of those projects. So I'm just curious, what programs do you use? I'm in the process of trying to self-publish my own book and I'm wondering about um, kind of book designs. I've, I've heard of a couple of websites that help you with your page design per kind of per page for the book. So I'm wondering, what do you use? Yeah, so I'm not designing my own book. I did do one. Um, I did a nonfiction book cover for a book on disability 
that I'm going to put out um, hopefully later this year. I used Canva for that, honestly. And um, I, so Canva is one place that you can use. You can use a lot of different ones. But what I said was that um, I still outsource my book cover design and I outsource the editing. Um, but if you are experienced, I heard that you can even design in pages. I don't know how good that is, but there's a couple different, um, on my website, I have a writer's resources page and I list cover designers as well as um, people doing freelance design. So Facebook has a number of groups where they are putting out. And you know, another favorite um, place that I actually bought a pre-made book cover was selfpublishedbookcovers.com. They have um, a number of book covers. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. You can put your name on it, you can mock it up. That's why I love it so much because you can really get inspired um, and see your, your name on the book, which is so fun. Um, and I actually bought covers for as little as $79 on here. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Oh, so this was um, this is selfpubbookcovers.com. Selfpub, not published. Selfpubbookcovers.com. What you would do is go down here. They're arranged. There are pre-made covers and then there are custom covers. This is kind of the Netflix of book covers. You can look at all of them and then you can kind of choose one. Um, what does somebody want to publish? What's your book about, Valerie? Um, it's a, it's actually a children's book um, okay. about prayer. Okay, great. I think they have children's books too, but um, I won't take you through the whole thing. But okay. I'm just gonna take one in general. Okay, I'm gonna uh -huh. take the flowers because tomorrow's Valentine's Day. So they tell you about the designer and who he is and he does back cover because that's also something you need to be aware of you do have to sometimes pay a little bit extra for the back cover because if you're just going to do an ebook you only need the front cover so the back cover and the spines um you'll be able to these are all vampires and very weird let's be friendly today okay so i'm going to choose one it says customize me it's 89 dollars and what you can do is put your, um, you know, your name in here, okay? And that's why I like it. It's just because it's, I'm trying to see your last name. Oh, it's Venable, uh, V-N-A-B-L-E. Okay. But you can spend hours in here, V-E-N-A-B-L-E. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, I don't know why it's always pink because it can stand out. But you can totally move it up and down, left or right. It doesn't matter. You would, you know, put all of your text or not. So I'll show you the book cover that I um, bought with that is, uh, it's called Pack Light Thoughts for the Journey. That cover is for that. But I still wanted to show you the writer's digest. So the book cover, you can also get done on Fiverr. F-I-V-E-R-R, -R. it's a freelance website that you can outsource. Um, so go on there and also to motivate you, if you believe in vision boards and all that kind of stuff, you know, do your book cover and hang it up and put it up somewhere because that will, seeing your name on the book will motivate you like nothing else. So just think, remember that, think about that um, and take the time and then contact the designer. The designer is willing to work with you. You don't have to use the cover as is. You need some tweaking. He'll, he or she will totally tweak it for you in a way that you can use it. Even in fact, when I bought my um, when I bought my book, the the designer had saw what I had done and was able to offer a suggestion on the font. And so I thought that was really nice. I didn't expect her to. I didn't even know she was in there looking um at what i was you know doing but she came back with a suggestion for what i could do to make the font better all right so this is my kindle i have kindle for desktop the writer's market this is the songwriter's market i have that i have a lot of books i haven't read 
shame on me. But here's one of, I'm gonna sh show this. Um, this book is thick. It shouldn't be more than $19.99 or $20. Um, but here's what one of the publishers, this is Bethany House, very popular publisher. Now I'm gonna quiz you. Are they taking, um, let's see, are they taking historical romance? Pat says no, gotta read faster. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so it gives you a synopsis, publishes hardcover and trade paperback originals. Uh, mass market Bethany House publisher specializes in books that communicate biblical truth. So it is, you know, a faith-based publisher. Um, it publishes 90 to 100 titles a year. Some book, some publishers publish like 10 titles a year or 50, okay? So this is 2% of books from first-time authors, okay? 50% from unagented writers. Do they accept unagented submissions? <laughs> come on, come on, tell me. I've been a very poor teacher if you don't know this. Yes, thank you, Pat. Thank you, Lauren. Yes, it says right here. 50% of the 90 to 100 titles that we publish come from people who don't have agents. That's encouraging. Pays royalty, pays advance, publishes a book a year after acceptance. I think they've gotten better about saying this because people don't know that it takes a year to get it all done. Um, I've, I look at publishing houses like the Ford Motor Company. You know, you go through all of these different tracks and everybody's responsible for doing different things to the car. Car doesn't, car takes a little while to build, just as does a book, okay? Um, they do nonfiction and fiction. Here's a tip. They're all about the Bible, so don't come with secular, um, you know, your, no erotica, no erotica submissions, please. Um, so Writer's Digest has like 300 pages of listings. And they also have um, Ashley, the magazine listings. What I love about it is that it gives you the, um, and trade journals. Oh, and they also have contests and awards. Never stop entering contests, even after you've been published. I entered five contests this year for published authors because um, I still wanna get, get my book out there, get feedback, get information, and just you know, still keep your name out there. A contest for a published author is still the way to go. I was gonna try to show you the query letter. Oh, here it is. All right, this is what it looks like. Um, this is for manuscript formatting sample. That's not right. That's for how, you should, how your manuscript should look. But now we're getting to the query letters, okay? So dear Mr. Boaz, there are 87 varieties. This is for a nonfiction magazine. So that's why I like it is because they tell you how it should look. So you should just get the book for that alone. Up here is a little bit of, you know, like a statement that, hey, I know what's going on out there in the world. Um, located in the heart of Arkansas, this company spent the past decade providing great organic crops. crops. I have no idea what they're talking about. But down here, they say as a seasoned writer with access to richer banks. So this is like they want to do an interview on somebody or a profile piece. Okay. Okay, so this is what, and then down here, this is how much, how long it is. It's 800 to 1200 word. Um, and he has photo photographs. Photographs are big. If you're like an amateur photographer, get some photographs. And so here, they have let you know all the points of the good points. My name is only available on her magazine's website and on the masthead. This writer has done her research. So that was back in number one. Dear Mr. Boaz, get their name right. They like it. Here's a story that hasn't been pitched before. I didn't know Morganic was so unique in the market. I want to know more, okay? Um, the writer has access to her interview subject. She displays knowledge of the magazine and um, just more information about why it's a good. But they have a magazine query um, and they have a book query. Tracy? Yes the library is shutting down because of the ice so okay. we can maybe take 
two more questions, but we two only have a couple more minutes. You guys, this is it. But this, I hope this has been helpful. Send me feedback, send me an email um, to get the PowerPoint slides. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I know you're not David, but I have to call you that. That's what your name says. Um, <laughs> Thank you again. And um, um, yeah, this was this was great. I hope they invite you back. Um, sure. Where do you um, um, where do we find your um, books that you mentioned maybe on your website? And I was also wondering, are there any uh, an audio format by any? Yes, my two um, books in the new series, the Jameson family series are in audio and the other two will be in there. It's four books total. Um, but the first two are already in audio. And that's something else we could talk about at a later time. I did um, do my own audio. Yeah. I didn't read them, but I did use ACX Amazon platform to publish my audiobooks. Final question. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch for if I need to follow up more. Okay. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thank you, Ashley. Last question, anyone? Is there anyone I missed in the chat that was posed? I can tell you're all writers because you didn't just ask a question. You had a little bit of commentary. And in there somewhere is the question. But I have to read through all that. First. Create a nonfiction for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tracy. This has been wonderful. And there was so much information. And I, I think everybody really enjoyed it. It was lovely. Great. Thanks for having me again. Take care, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Read some romance. All right.